Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77 and uh, today I want to talk about this nifty little horror anthology I just checked out and uh, I like this movie and if you get it, if you haven't seen it yet, if you get a chance, check it out. It's really good. Um, the movie I'm talking about is called Nightmare Cinema and it's directed by five different directors. You got Mick Garris from The Stand, Joe Dante from Gremlins, um, David Slade from 30 Days of Night. Uh, forgive me if I butcher this name. I'm not trying to. I just. Uh, Rayuni Kitamura from Midnight Me Train. And uh, Alejandro uh, Bruges from One of the Dead. I'm sorry if I messed up the names. That wasn't my intention. But anyway, yeah, I just uh, finished watching this. And this is a nifty. I love good horror anthologies. And this one definitely works in that category. Um, so, yeah. And another thing is, though, too, if you ever come across this, the Blu-ray is no more than $14.99. So if you pick this up, even on Blu-ray, you're getting a good deal. And I think the DVD you can find for maybe like 10 bucks. But anyway, let's go ahead and we'll talk about this. Uh, this is, um, okay, now, <clears throat> you have this, uh, the best way I could describe this movie is, let's say that Mick Garris decided that he wanted to get a number of directors, which he did, and say, I want to make Masters of Horror the movie. Now, I mean, we're all horror fans. We know the TV series Masters of Horror. We knew what Mick, Gar Mick Garris created it. He was one of the writers and directors on the series. Um, and that was his goal, was to get every big name you know, horror writer, every big name horror director, and, and even the best up-and-comers, and get them all to do episodes of this series. And it lasted for two seasons on Showtime. Then they did a third season on one of the regular networks. I don't remember if it was NBC or whatever, but uh, but they retitled it instead of Masters of Horror. They called it Fear Itself. So technically, there was like three um, three seasons of Masters of Horror, but uh, but it, almost like that's kind of what this feels like. As if he decided, I want to do. Let's say, you know, we weren't going to do Masters of Horror like a theatrical movie. This is kind of what this would be. In the sense that uh, you got five different directors, you have five different uh, stories, and they all have a different style to them. Um, you know, kind of, they all have a different cinematic feel to them. Um, now the story opens up. We have this young lady. She's going into the, you know, she's just walking along. She's on the phone, and, you know, she's talking Apparently her boyfriend, you know, cheated on her and stuff like that. And she's talking about what a dick he is and everything else. And then she, you know, notices this weird, creepy, abandoned looking, you know, old movie house. And so she goes in and she start, you know, and she feels like she's being drawn to it. And as a matter of fact, she is. And um, she's even being kind of like led to a particular seat where, you know, she sees the spotlight on the seat and she's kind of forced into it. And then we get into the first story and I'm going to try not to give away too much because, you know, it's like I want to leave some surprises. But the first story is really, really good. Um, it, and nothing makes a horror anthology better than a good story to kick it off right. You know, it's like when you watch the 1972 Tales from the Crypt, you know, you got the uh, the Christmas episode with um, Joan Collins or, you know, like in Creep Show, you got Father's Day, you know, I mean, you know, you're in for a good horror anthology when the first story just kind of really kicks you into high gear and gets it going good. And the first one, I believe, was directed by, uh, what was it, Alejandro Bruges, I want to say. I'm not going to sit here, you know, I'm not, yeah, I might mix up on some of, you know, who directed what. Um, like I said, I just finished watching this and it's still kind of fresh in my mind. But um, the story you know, it concerns, I don't want to get too into details because like I said, you know, I don't want to spoil the, the viewing experience for anybody, but let's just say, let's take a story that combines basically like Friday the 13th elements. You know, you got a slasher killing kids. You got like kids going to a cabin in the woods. You got that going for it. Um, let's throw in a little alien invasion and just, you know, kind of like all these different kind of, uh, horror subgenres kind of thrown into a thrown into a mixing pot and kind of mixed up. And that's what the first story would be. And it's, it's pretty entertaining, but you gotta, I'm going to tell you right now though, you got to kind of sit with it because if some of these stories you do, you know, you got to sit with it. You got to kind of pay attention, you know, cause if you come in late, you're going to be baffled. You're, you're not going to really know what you missed. Some of these stories are a little more complex. 
<clears throat> then we get to, uh, <clears throat> sorry, but I want to say that the first story was directed by Alejandro Bouge. Uh, but then we get to the second story, which, uh, I know was directed by Joe Dante. And, uh, uh, it concerns this, you know, beautiful woman and she's getting ready to, you know, but the problem is she's got a scar on her face. Now she got the scar on her face because she was in a car accident and she's, you know, like every, you know, young lady, she's very concerned about her look. She's very self-conscious. She's very worried that, uh, her fiance is not going to want her and everything. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, she's one of these kind of women that, you know, if any of us men and even women saw her, you know, it's like, even with the scar on her face, she's still stunningly beautiful. So any of us, you know, any of us guys would be like, dude, I'd still fuck. Yeah. I'd still take her out to dinner, man. I'd still take her out on a nice date and everything. I don't give a shit. If she got the scar on her face. She still looks great. You know? So, I mean, any of us would, but, but she's very self-conscious about it. And then, so she goes into the, uh, the theater with this fiance of hers and then they start watching and then we see that uh, they're at dinner and, you know, she's, you know, looking in the mirror and she's, you know, like very upset about how she looks. <clears throat> and she goes and sits with the fiance and the fiance is this handsome young guy and he's got a lot of money and everything else. And he's all talking about, yeah, I talked to mom and she's going to love you and everything else. And, and she's like, I don't know. Look at me. You know, how could you love something like this? Oh, honey, I love you. I love you and everything else. Uh, but he's like, if you're really concerned about it, um, um, you know, my mother, she knows this plastic surgeon and you know what he can, if you really feel that upset about it, you know, he can, you know, take it away and all this kind of stuff and, and fix you. And, and, you know, you'd be fine. You know, it doesn't matter how deep, you know, the scar tissue goes and everything. This guy says he can do it. He can do it, you know, stuff. So, and so she's kind of a little reluctant, but then she decides, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and go along with it and stuff. And, uh, so she goes along, she meets with this, plastic surgeon and he's all like oh yeah yeah don't worry about it i'll fix you up don't worry and everything else but you know he does the surgery then he's talking about doing more surgery then he's talking about doing more surgery and everything else and then let i'm gonna leave it at that this episode i know was directed by joe dante uh but let's just say that this guy turns out you know she starts realizing like the surgeries are going too much and all this kind of stuff and uh let's just say we find out that the boyfriend has a very kind of twisted warp sense of what he thinks a beautiful woman should be. So we'll leave it at that. Then we get into the third story, which is the, uh, this one I actually thought was directed by Alejandro Bruce, but I believe this one was directed by, uh, Ryuni, uh, Kitamura. Uh, again, I'm sorry if I butcher the names, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be an ass, but, um, this one I believe was directed by him. And, uh, this story concerns basically like a kind of like a Spanish kind of Catholic church slash orphanage. <clears throat> and, um, there's this demon that is basically possessing the kids and it's leading the kids to commit suicide. And it's leading the kids to also to do really horrible things. And you have this priest and this nun who, you know, they're the nun is trying to, um, you know, she's trying to, find out what's going on. So she's studying the books and she's starting to realize like, yeah, I think that's what's going on. It's this demon is possessing the children. And, and we have to, um, you know, we have to fight this demon before it kills any more of the children. This, you know, that, uh, that's a really, really good one. Um, I think for some people that would probably be one of the standout episode in the entire film. <clears throat> also too, uh, let me go back just a second. We also get introduced to basically our kind of, uh, crypt keeper kind of creep uh what we have is we got the project projectionist and he's played in this movie by mickey rourke and now i gotta be honest with you um when i think of you know like a horror host or you know you know stuff like that it's like i gotta be honest mickey rourke doesn't exactly come to come to my mind at first but um you know he's mickey rourke he's badass and you know uh you know he's super cool and everything else. So it's like, it kind of works, you know? Um, I don't think he's going to really stack up against the crib keeper, but still, you know, he's really good. You know, I enjoy him, you know, so it's just kind of cool. And it's different too. Maybe that's what makes it work. It's the fact that, 
you know, he's different from the other kind of like horror hosts and stuff. You know, it's just, you know, you got this guy who's looking super bad, super cool. And, you know, he's dressed up in leather and everything else. And maybe that's what kind of makes it work. In fact, he's a standout. So, but anyway, so yeah, Mickey Rourke is pretty good in this, I think. But then we go into the story and then, you know, we find out about the, um, um, but then it turns out that it's like, well, you know, it's one of these things. It's kind of like, yeah, these religious stories are kind of tricky because, you know, we find out that uh, it turns out that the priest and the nun are, you know, getting up some pretty naughty business while the kids are asleep and everything. And so it's kind of like, yeah, you know, usually, you know, they tell you like in exorcist films and stuff, you know, that uh, if a priest, you know, or a nun or any, you know, they're going to be fighting against demons and stuff. They have to be, you know, like really really pious you know they have to be really known for their innocence and things like that and their pious look on life and things like that so when you got the you know when you got the priest you know banging the nun you know that's yeah it doesn't exactly work so let's just say everything goes awry and that one has that one's probably got the most blood and the most gore and carnage and things like that and uh so you know we'll just leave it at that like i said i don't want to spoil it for anybody but it's really good really good then we get to the four story, which in my mind, that one was kind of the, uh, I didn't get it. I'm going to be honest with you. That one kind of flew over my head. Um, but to me, that one was kind of the weakest segment. Um, you have this woman, she's in this doctor's office with her kids and, um, you know, is, and it's just kind of like things get weird and she's seeing things and like, you know, she's seeing like black germ and mold and everything, just taking over everything. She's seeing people one minute they look normal and they kind of almost turn like a Jacob's ladder kind of, you know, one minute they look normal. Next minute they look deformed, you know, kind of like a schizophrenic. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kind of, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to kind of skip over that one because that story, I admit, I just didn't get it too much. Maybe if I watch it a second time, maybe it make more sense to me, but, but I would have to say that would probably be my least favorite in this one. But uh, then we get to the final story, which uh, written direct by Mick Garris. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the thing. They don't tell you until the end of the movie, like who directed what episode, who directed, you know, who wrote what episode, things like that. And, uh, you know, it's like the, you know, the Joe Dante one is like that one was kind of see, that's the thing. OK, I got to be honest. It's like it's kind of hard now to know when Joe Dante directs an episode of a movie or a series or anything like that, because used to the thing about Joe Dante, he always had like his stock actors and actresses and things like that. Um, you know, usually like, you know, he always had like, you know, Dick Miller, you know, was always in everything Joe Dante did. So it's like, if you saw, if you saw Dick Miller, you knew it was Joe Dante. If you saw like Robert Picardo, you knew it was Joe Dante or Kevin McCarthy or, you know, who else? Um, you, you get the idea, you know, I mean, he always had like his stock actors and actresses. So if you saw them, you knew it was Joe Dante or Belinda Belaski, which actually she does turn up in the segment, but you know, um, I'll say that. But, uh, so anyway, so I'm sitting there. I was like, well, is this the one that Mick Garris did? And as soon as I saw Annabeth Gish, I was like, this is the Mick Garris one because you know, yeah, Annabeth Gish, she's worked with Mick Garris before, she, you know, desperation, back of bones, things like that. So and they always had a good working relationship. So as soon as I saw Annabeth Gish, you know, okay. And the story, you know, Annabeth Gish and her husband, um, they're an interracial couple. They have this young son and this young son turns out he's like a piano prodigy and he's really good at playing the piano and stuff. So they're getting done with their, his recital and they're going out to their car and this guy shows up and he's trying to mug them and everything. He gets them out of the car and, um, the, the father decides he's going to try to fight and protect his family and ends up getting shot in the process. And so Annabeth Gish, you know, she, she, you know, decides to jump in front of the gun to save her son. And she tells him, run, run. And she gets shot too. And so the boy he's running and the guy shoots the boy and, but the boy ends up living and he gets to the hospital and, um, uh, he starts seeing things. He starts seeing ghosts and things like that. And, uh, it turns out, you know, he was dead for, I think, I believe they said like 14 minutes, but he was dead for an amount of time. And then they finally brought him back and he's going to survive. He's going to pull through. And then there's this young girl named Casey who, you know, she befriends him and she, you know, tells him that, uh, you know, she sees these ghosts too. And it turns out, you know, like he keeps thinking he sees his mother, but he's, what it is is he sees his mother's ghost. And then, uh, <clears throat> the mother's ghost keeps telling him to let go 
kind of let yourself basically let yourself die so you could come to the other side and be with me and your father and stuff like that. And Casey is, um, you know, Casey is trying to help him, you know, to stay alive. And she's, you know, don't, you know, don't, you know, let yourself die, things like that. And uh, so, you know, this young boy, he's really like having to, you know, he's, this kid's got a lot on his plate, but add on to that also the, the guy, the mugger, you know, decided that, well, he finds out he goes to the hospital, found out that he didn't finish the job. And so he wants to go back and, and kill this kid. So it's like, you know, so it's kind of ghost story with, you know, this, you know, but then you got this guy who's, you know, so you got the, I mean, it's, it's an interesting story. It's a very good character piece. Um, you know, very good, you know, very well-written characters, you know, it takes its time, you know, it tries to establish the characters, establish the story, really tries to get you to feel, you know, for the characters of what, you know, especially the young man, what he's going through and everything else. And uh, it's a very well done story. Um, not super gory, but you know, it's got some gruesome images some gruesome moments to it. And it does have some blood and gore, but, um, but uh, overall I would definitely say that, uh, yeah, nightmare cinema is definitely a good, good horror anthology. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, it's only like, you know, 1499 on Blu-ray. You probably, hell, I got this for about half of that. I paid only seven fifty for this. So, you know, it's worth it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, good entertainment for a good price. Um, you know, yeah, you got the good stories and everything else. I wouldn't mind if there's a sequel to this. Hopefully there will be. Um, yeah, Mick Garris, Joe Dante, they all did a great job on this. So if you like a good horror anthology, I definitely say give Nightmare Cinema a try. So anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it. And uh, if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I also appreciate you for doing it. Um, I, if you enjoyed the video, I hope you like on it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer for every day of the week. I'm the Saturday reviewer. Uh, we have a bunch of great guys. They're all doing great stuff. And uh, so, yeah, come and check us all out. And uh, everybody have a good night. Take care. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.